So in this video, we're actually going to be taking a look at how do we stylize the actual and guess coordinates to be colors. And we're going to look at how do we add these text boxes right here that display our information that's actually over here hidden in the algebra window. Going to our current production file, what we're going to do to change the styles here, we're actually going to come over here and right click in the algebra window and go to object properties. Now, to select all of your objects at any given time, you can click at, on the header that you see right here, or if you would like to select multiples, you can cl click on one and then hold down the shift key and press the other, and that will select both of them at the same time. In this case, what we're going to do is actually make these a little bit bigger so that when they're on the actual graph, they stand out a little bit more. And then the next thing we're gonna do is selecting off of these and then selecting one at a time we're going to make the guess a diamond and then we're going to select the actual coordinate point and make it an x so you can see now if we move this out of the way that one of these looks like a diamond the other one looks like an x but it doesn't show up very well on the green so to change that we're going to come over to the color selector and here's where you can choose whatever color you'd like knowing that it will always save these over here in the recent folder. So I'm going to decide to make this an orange, and you'll notice that it changes both the lettering and the actual coordinate color. And then I'm gonna select the guess over here and change guess to be a blue color. Now that I've done that, the next step that we're going to focus on is how we actually create the text box. So coming up here, this drop-down arrow normally is defaulted to the slider button right here, but what we're going to do is select input box. Now when you create input boxes, originally it's going to try and snap to these grids, and so one thing that I do as kind of a way to organize my work is I'll actually try and click right on a crosshair, and it'll give me this input box option right here. Now the caption that you are looking at right here is gonna be what's displayed on the side of the input box. In this case, I want this box to say f of x equals, and then what I want it to display is the value of f of x over here in the algebra window. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the linked objects and select exactly what I want it to display. Now when I click OK, it's going to go ahead and insert the box right there and you'll notice that it's pretty long because we're going to be making several of these boxes i'm going to leave that alone for right now and go ahead and make my other boxes so the second box that i want is what x value the student should be considering as input and what i'm going to do is call it x value here but what it's going to display is the value of the x that we want them to use for input so when I do that, you'll see that it creates xval and displays 3 because xval is 3 already over here. And then the last thing we need is what's the student's guess. So taking a look at what the guess is, we're going to link that to our guess val. What's important to note here is that putting the caption guess right here does not link it to the guess object over here in the algebra view because that's not the object that we actually linked to. And you can see when we go to the drop down menu that you have guess as a coordinate point right here, but guess val is what we want the student to type in as the number. Now that we have our input boxes made, I'm going to adjust these, but the problem that I'm running into is I don't see them over here anywhere where I could select them in the algebra view. Algebra view. Right clicking on one of them, I can go to object properties and you'll notice that in the object properties window, you ha now have three input boxes. So I'm gonna select all three of these and you can see in the algebra view that it's highlighted all three of them. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the style tab and the style tab will allow you to adjust the length. The number that you see here is how many characters you could type into this box before you start going outside of its viewing range. Knowing that for the most part, xval and guess are probably only going to be one to two digits long. f of x is probably going to be the longest thing that we need to display, so I'm just going to go ahead and set everything to five. And if we need to adjust one of these later on, we can. Now, the last thing that's a little confusing is when you initially pick 
input boxes and you click on them, you can type them, but you can't really move them. The reason for that is because GeoGebra initially sets them up to where wherever you place your coordinate grid, these will always be visible on the computer screen. To be able to move them around, what you need to do is actually go back into your op object properties, and when you select them and go back to the basic tab, you'll notice that there's this one checkbox called fixed object. So long as fixed object is checked, you will not be able to move the actual text box. So if I select all of these and uncheck fixed object, now I can actually come over here to the move tool and right click on any of these and move them around to wherever I'd like. So if you want them to be a little bit closer to each other, you can right click on them and space them out using the grid as kind of a guide for where they're going to snap. In our next video, we're going to take a look at how do we actually stylize these boxes and then how do we begin to create a little bit more interactivity by adding checkboxes.